In a previous video, we scaled the horizontal screen for the VGA monitor with the UK101 or Superboard 2 video. One of the commenters in previous videos said that he mentioned that he had a better driver that he'd made in the past and he adapted it for us for the Superboard. What a, what a nice guy. A big, huge shout out to Crazy Ape. Let's see what his result looked like. I think it's really, really impressive. Well, here's the result. Wow, 64 columns, and we'll see 32 rows. Beautiful, nice, nice work. Uh, he did some pretty neat uh, VHDL guru magic in there. I'll try to take a look at the code, although I'm not sure I understand it in a lot of spots. Maybe he'll come and make some comments and help us understand what he did, but very neat. It's definitely a big improvement when you're doing a little bit of uh, peaks and pokes to have it be quite a bit taller. And here's all 32 lines displayed. Um, he also put a cyan band around it which really made it nice for centering. I messed around with this code and screwed it up and he <laughs> went and even patched my code directly and the module he gave me just plopped right in. He made it work inside a multi-comp. Uh, very nice. Again, big shout out to Crazy Ape. Uh, if you want to reveal your uh, real name in the, in the thread below, feel free. If not, uh, you're doing some wonderful work and I definitely appreciate it. It really made my day. Here's the entity that he created for his VGA VHDL code. It's nearly identical to the one that I was using from Grant's code originally, except notice he's replaced the clock with a 40 megahertz clock that came out of the PLL, and he has made a full vector for the video. The reason that vector is 17 bits is he has five red six green, four blue, H-sync and V-sync, so he's put it all together in one long vector. Uh, that's a technique that I think I want to learn from him. That's pretty neat. And to compare, here's my version from Grant's code of the same entity, same character address, display address for the dual ported access to the device, uh, clock, which was just the 50 megahertz clock, in that case video and sync and I was replicating the video up at the microprocessor entity level. Um, I really like what he did doing it all down inside of here. It probably makes sense to me to put everything possible down inside a module and just bring in and out vectors. Uh, quite a good technique. And here's the PLL entity. He sends out three different clocks of 50 megahertz, 40 megahertz, and 100 megahertz. Uh, he's been encouraging me to try to get the SD RAM controller going and he pointed me off with some good pointers. I just haven't had time yet to plow down into them. I've been taken off by other interests at the moment, but I think that's a promising way of getting more RAM than the 19K or so we're getting. The 30K blocks are, are really all expended in this UK 101 version and we only have 19K. It would be nice to have a full, I think it's 41K or so, something like that. There's also a project out there for the 6809 CPU where Neil Crook has created a memory mapper that will allow you to have more memory and people have used such things with CPM and other ways. Um, I built an SRAM version of this card with a bigger RAM and was able to use that there as well. So again, a promising potential. Um, I'm just afraid it's going to take a little bit of work and I think I will get around to it before the end of this video series because I don't think it would be complete without at least trying to get the large RAM size working that's built onto the card. Let's take a look at his code and see what we can figure out. The border color looks like it's the cyan color we can see here and the order is all of the bits, red, green, and blue. I was only using the top two bits matching the multi-comp but he's expanded that out to be all 16 bits which is a nice feature. Um, I like that he made the screen background or background blue and the character color white. That is definitely my favorite uh, color sense. It looks so much better than black and white or any of the other choices. Um, let's see, he's got the VGA coded here, uh, horizontal count and vertical count. And then he has some transformation math that he did to scale both vertically and horizontally. Uh, it doesn't produce like pixel perfect. Uh, characters if you notice that's a little bit skewed looking in spots but there's no way to get it perfect because there's uh, just so much data that has to be put in various places. Um, here's the VGA out down here or the VGA all red green and blue and notice there's one extra bit of green 
here. That's the way the card was designed. Um, I think that's often done because green um, doesn't have quite or has more potential for scaling. Uh, he also eliminated the VGA out, which I had, the, or excuse me, the composite out, which I had done also. His coat is really nicely laid out. He has a horizontal counter. Um, I believe he told me that he has this set up for 800 by 600 video. I haven't checked it with the scope or anything to see what he's doing, but it makes some sense to me that it, it might be. Uh, the clock is the 40 megahertz pixel clock, and he's counting horizontally up to 1055. And these are all the bits that clear the counter when he reaches the count. So it's basically an up counter, counts up by one, and when it reaches a terminal count, it resets back to zero. The vertical counter is also very clean. Um, does it, He does the same thing when he reaches that 1055 count on the horizontal count, he increments the line count. So he's taking, making basically two counters for that vertical and a horizontal line count. And then when he reaches that terminal count of 627 lines, so I believe he is doing 800 by 600 based on that number right there, uh, then he resets the vertical counter. Again, very easy to read and clean code. I, I feel like I can almost even understand it. So he separates the video out into active and inactive sections and when it gets above a certain count, he's um, asserting active and inactive in here, I believe is what he's doing. In this section of the code, he generates the horizontal and vertical sinks, and he's looking for particular line counts for, to know when to assert vertical sink and horizontal sink. He had some original numbers here, which are the numbers that are shown here. I tweaked with them because my monitor was not working right, but he let me know that I was tweaking in the wrong place, that there was a better place to do micro adjustments, and we'll show that when we get down here a little bit farther, but again, very clean code. This is the part of his code where the real magic happens, and as he describes it, it's a transformation matrix used to decouple the rendering from the physical display resolution, and he says 16-bit virtual plane, and if he gets a chance, maybe he can explain to us what that means in the comment section. But basically, he's doing some math here, and the adjustment that he gave for my monitor was subtract these numbers off, and if you try using the same VHDL code, you might want to tweak your numbers here to make it fit your screen if they don't fit perfectly. If they, if it's off, uh, try getting rid of those because maybe this is just for my monitor but it's up in the code right now. And he's doing some uh, fine adjustments here for what pixels actually get displayed where. When I first tried his code it uh, made me lose 1k of RAM and it was due to this uh, function here. He ended in or concatenated in the video, uh, video H signal here which, as he said, this little clue prevents inf inferred RAM-based shifters. It was making a 1K RAM, and by putting this little bit of logic in here, it forced it to be logic rather than RAM. And that was nice, because I every little K counts when you've only got 19K. And it looks like this function uh, does some smarts with calculation of the 64 columns. And as he says, find screen memory address for XY character positioning. It's a nice way to map it in, um, doing a divide by 64, because there's 64 characters per row. Uh, very clean, nice little way to go at it. Um, kind of complicated, but definitely does the job, for sure. Let's comment here in the next section. Find address of required character in character generator ROM. Again, some magic with scaling, and um, I'm not even sure I can follow exactly what he's doing. Uh, pretty cool though. It definitely, <laughs> as I said, does a job. And the final section here is the display of the character pixels. Again, some magic going on here that, that does some pretty cool stuff. Looks like this is where the border color gets put in for that part of the screen that's not quite displayed characters. And the final section is just the connections out to the display itself. So nice job. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully others will find use out of it and it should give us a lot more capability out of that UK 101 than the original one had. Boy, my 24 by 24 characters that squeezed off the side of my TV screen probably really gave me 20 by 20. Uh, we've come a long way and this is definitely using new technology, and not that VGA is all that new, but using relatively new technology and putting it into the retro environment. Just about everybody probably has an old VGA monitor sitting around or 
uh, older television that still has a VGA jack in the back. And this makes good use of it and brings it back to retro computer era. Again, thanks uh, Crazy Ape for your hard efforts here. Um, I know you based it on something you already did before that. If you want to describe that in the comments, see that would be really cool. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is, I think, the platform that I'm going to use for the next series I do on audio and just keep working off the same hardware. Uh, I like the 32 rows. The 20, 80 by 25 is nice, but the 32 rows I think is real cool just to have that many rows when you're doing a little bit of code here and there. Anyhow, thanks for watching and uh, give uh, Crazy Ape a shout out if you like what he did. He put very generous licensing terms, unrestricted release, do with it as you see fit. I've loaded up my GitHub, it's part of the standard build for this particular version and I'll drop a link down in the show notes of where you can find it if you want to try to put it into your multi-comp build. If you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like, share and subscribe.